Welcome everyone to Unmatched. This is a series of independent standalone games that can be combined together and have tactical combats. We're going to look at the 1v1 mode, though there are a three or four player variants which are effectively team modes. Now, you can get different sets of this. These are two examples here, and they are standalone games, but you can also put them together, combine them, and basically play different heroes from different boxes. So this box is Battle of Legends Volume 1. There is a second one on the way. And this has King Arthur, Alice from Alice in Wonderland, Sinbad, and Medusa. Now, if you were to have this box, each player would pick one of those heroes and they would be able to then fight it out to the death. If you had this smaller box, you could play the matchup that is Robin Hood versus Bigfoot. They are the two characters in this box. But what if you wanted to do Robin Hood versus King Arthur, or maybe Bigfoot versus Medusa? Well, you can. To start the game, you are effectively going to pick your hero regardless of which box you want it from. So let's say you're wanting to play as Robin Hood. Well, first of all, regardless, you're going to need a board from either of the boxes, and they are double-sided. Now, in this smaller box, it is designed for two players, so you only have a board that will work with two. However, in the larger box, where you can play the team mode, there is a different board, but all will work. Basically, you need to just pick one and pick a side. It doesn't really matter who's playing, depending on the side, it's just a slightly different configuration of the map. Next, you'll go into the box and you'll pull out your deck of cards, so for Robin Hood, and then all of the card backs are the same. That is Robin Hood's deck and the character card. So you can pull that one out separately and the rest you're going to shuffle. You're also going to have a character health dial, which you can set to the maximum based on your character card. Now, you can't go above that, but you will certainly, over time, be losing health and going down the health dial. You're also going to have a character mini, and the youngest player will start the game, and they will put their miniature on the number one space, and the other player will go on the number two space. Each person will have at least one sidekick. Now, these are nice plastic tokens, and these represent uh, basically your allies in the game. Now, Robin Hood has four of these. Most of the other characters, apart from Medusa, they only have one. But these are going to go anywhere in the region of the board that you start in. So I can do this. Now, how does that exactly work? Well, the battlefield is split up into colored regions. You are adjacent to any circle that has a line from one to the other. A melee character only needs to know if they're adjacent. That's the only way they can attack. So are they in a space that is linked to another space where the enemy that they're attacking, the other fighter is? Now, if you're ranged like Robin Hood, you can always attack someone adjacent, just like melee, but you can also hit anyone or target anyone that is in the same region. The region is literally spaces that have that color. Now, some spaces are going to be multiple colors, and that's either split down the middle or into thirds, depending on where they are. At the beginning of the game, you're going to draw a hand of five cards. Now, these could be red attack cards. They could be blue defense cards. They could be purple attack or defense cards, or they could be, and they're quite rare in the deck, yellow scheme cards. They're rare in pretty much all of the decks, but they're normally quite strong, powerful abilities that are one-time effects. On your turn, you're going to do two actions, and that can be a choice of three. Now, on the reverse of your character card, there are the options, so you can always refer to this just by flipping it over. Now, they are maneuver, attack, or scheme. Maneuver sees you drawing a card, and you have a hand limit of seven cards, but it only triggers at the end of your turn. Then, once you've drawn that card, and that is a mandatory part, you can then move each of your fighters, that is your main hero miniature, as well as your sidekick tokens, 
up to your movement value, which can be found on the front side of your character card. So for Robin Hood, the movement value is two for all of the fighters. You don't need to move every fighter. You don't need to move up to the full distance. However, you can discard cards to boost that movement. For example, this card here has the small circle here for a three. I could discard that to move three extra spaces. Now, as Robin Hood, that's probably going to be running away, but other characters might be using it to get up close and personal. The next thing you might want to do, maybe before or after moving, is to attack. Now, when you play cards from your hand, if they are a red attack or a purple attack defense, they're gonna tell you who can use them. For example, this card can be used by Robin Hood, whereas this card, which is an attack or defense, can be used by any of your fighters. And some will say they are by the, the outlaws, the merry men, or Robin Hood. Now, each character has at least one sidekick and there are cards that can only be used either by the main fighter, the sidekick, or either. So you have to keep that in mind when playing your cards. When you have declared a target and you have chosen your card, your opponent can choose to defend. And that's when they're going to be trying to play maybe one of their defense cards from their hand to block the damage. Then the attack will take place. There are immediate effects on cards. Some are before, during, or after combat, and they come into effect when they say. Maybe they cancel the other person's effects, or maybe they do something once you've won the combat. Now, how do you win a combat? Because maybe you're only chipping down their health dial. Well, effectively, the way combat works is once you have played an attack and the defense, you subtract one from the other, and if they're still taking damage, they will lower their health dial and the attacker has won that bit of combat. If the defender didn't take any damage, however, they have won the combat instead. The final action is to scheme, and these will only be playable when you have one of the cards in your hand. These do awesome things if played at the right time. So on your turn, you will do two things. You could move twice, attack twice, scheme twice, or maybe, and most probably, do a combination of the three. Once you've done your two actions, that's your turn over and play moves to the other person. They will then do their two and so on. When you manage to make your opponent's health dial hit zero, you have won the game. And that's almost everything you need to know. Now, there is one special thing about this deck of cards. There's very few ways to get any discarded cards back into your deck or hand. In fact, most characters can't do that. So when you've gone through your deck, what happens? Certainly when it comes to moving, well, this is almost like a stamina bar. When you are running out of cards, you're fine, but when you've run out of that draw pile, they're either in your hand or they're discarded. When you have to draw a card, you lose health. And this is very important because it does mean that there is a definitive end. You could lose the game by a war of attrition, not necessarily by being sort of smacked down by your opponent. Now, these decks aren't thin. You've got to play a number of rounds for you to have burnt your way through but with various ways to draw bonus cards every time you move, gaining a card, it does happen. So it is something to watch out for. So that is how you play Unmatched and how you combine more than one box. Very simply, grab everything you need from that hero from the box, put them down on a map and fight it out.